Well, church bells tolled across Pennsylvania today in remembrance of the five Amish girls who were gunned down last week. In an extraordinary act of forgiveness, members of the Amish community attended those funerals, uh, the funeral for, for Charles Carl Roberts, the man who killed those little girls. Tomorrow, President Bush will hold a conference on school safety. So what can he do to help make our kids safe? We turn to our A-list. Today, we're happy to be joined by Cody Willard, who's a hedge fund manager and columnist for the Financial Times and TheStreet.com. Natasha Lapino Geraci is a criminal defense attorney. Bob Strang, who you know from watching him here, is the CEO of the Investigative Management Group and today's wild card. We're thrilled to have in the house Fox News' own Paige Hopkins. Paige gets a free pass. She can cut in on anybody anytime. She can say whatever she wants, which Paige usually does anyway. Hi, Paige. Uh, hello, Martha. Good to have you here. I'm happy to be here. You, you know, first of all, just, just a, a thought about these Amish funerals and the fact that so many of the Amish showed up at the funeral for this murder, I just find so extraordinary. Well, it's so touching, and we could learn a lot about forgiveness from them. I mean, it's incredible, and the irony that this could happen in the Amish community, because if your child isn't safe in a schoolhouse in the Amish country, where's your child safe? Exactly. You know, Bob, uh, we've been talking a lot about security, and, you know, I know I called my children's school today to talk to them when we were doing this segment, mm -hmm. and, and I think so many of us feel that, that there aren't enough safety precautions put in place at schools. What would you like to see come out of this conference that the President and Margaret Spellings are having tomorrow? I'd like to see an agenda in all the local schools across the country where they actually take a look at security, and they have CCTV, perhaps, or they have a system with the local police department or the sheriff's department and the teachers where they have panic buttons or ways for right. teachers to communicate immediately. You know, security in our school systems, kids are our most valuable resource, and it ought to be a priority, but the fact is, it's not right now. It's not. You know, we have an email coming in on this as well, and Brandy writes to us from Ohio and says, my daughter's in the first grade, and I don't feel that she's safe. We live in a small town, population 40,000. She thinks that parents should take a more active role, and this is an idea that I just spoke about with somebody uh, from our school this morning, the possibility that parents could volunteer, you know, to step in in the meantime and sit at a desk in, in the front hallway because literally in many of these schools you, you can just walk right but in. The problem with that is it's not as you know if someone's got three guns and they're coming into a school to actually kill someone it's not like putting a parent in it anywhere is really going to stop that you know my mother is a high school English teacher in rural New Mexico and yes I worry about her she you know they've had six lockdowns uh, in the last year and a half and th she th her students have to huddle in the corner she has to go lock the doors but the fact of the matter is you know that I'm not sure putting more tax dollars into this is going to do anything to actually stop these things. It's a societal problem. What do you think, Natasha? You know, it, it's guns. I mean, look at all of the, every one of the ones you're talking about have to do with guns. How does a child, this case just now today in mm -hmm. Missouri, get an AK-47? He got it from somebody who bought it. Why do, why do they even sell AK-47s? For hunting? I mean, I think we have to go back and go and talk to the NRA. Nobody needs to have this many guns on the street. And it's an easy way. It's not like someone's going into school with a knife. That's very hand-to-hand. -hand. That's very intimate. It's very easy for a kid to take a gun, you press it a couple times, and people but how do you die. Get the, how do we get the guns out of their hands anyway? The guns are out there in right. society. Exactly, right. Like and there's a huge black that. market, and guns do not shoot people. People shoot people. I know, but I hear that all the time. But if less guns are out there, and you say AK-47 shouldn't be sold to anyone at any time, the black market will grow. <laughs> yes, the black but market but will you know grow. I don't know. Are really going to have yeah, it then? What do you think about that, Bob? Well, I, it's a good point because the less guns the kids have, the better. I think we can all agree. Right, right, right. But the fact remains that we still have potential problems with violence, whether they right. use a knife, whether it's a terrorist attack, whether it's a, a bomb that's being made. These things have been, you know, proven in the past to be a real destructive issue for schools. So it's really dealing with programs. I, I'm on the board for Dare America, and part of that process is to teach kids in the school about violence, to build relationships with police officers. The part about the parents coming involved, that's yeah. a good point. Too. I mean, you've got it. This is a community issue. There's not one blanket answer for the whole country because what we do with the school in New York City with okay. megatometers, right. with mm -hmm. police officers yes. roaming the hallways and the, the gym isn't going to be the same but as we do But these things didn't happen. You know, these things are happening in rural America in places where people feel like they should be safe. But are we talking about two different things? We're talking about violence in the classroom where you get knife fights, where kids come in with guns, and then you're talking about the rogue lunatic who comes in and he's mad at his wife and he's going to shoot Which is a whole new phenomenon. Children. So we're talking about two very different veins of violence. And it was interesting because 
because I, I uh, when I'm not watching Fox News Channel, I listen to a lot of talk radio, and it was buzzing this morning, and teachers were calling in, and one teacher was saying, she teaches up in the Hudson Valley, a knife fight breaks out in her classroom last week. She calls in security. She's a cop in her off hours, but she obviously was not armed in the classroom. Security comes in. All security has are flashlights and keys. Right. They exactly. can't well, do anything. Right. Exactly. Right. But, but right. of course, the, then the, it's not as if we should start putting armed guards in the schools, too, because then you are just putting guns but that's in the school. All right, we're going to hold that thought. We're going to be back with much more. Coming up on the A-list, she'll play the wife of slain journalist Daniel Pearl, the reporter brutally murdered by Islamic terrorists. So why is Angelina telling us that her new film has nothing to do with terrorism, really? And just ahead, knocking on Wall Street's doors the high-tech way, how one graduate's attempt to land a job ended up online. you got to see this, folks. It's a great piece of video on YouTube you can't miss. We'll be right back. I guess the first thing the person needs to understand is that success is a mental transformation. It's not an external event. To be successful, you must first know exactly what you want to achieve. Second, you need to 